Hello everyone and happy spring. I hope you are enjoying a nice warm up of the weather here in LA. It is finally getting sunny and warm again, although I have to admit I'm a little bit upset about that because I do prefer when it's a lot colder. But anyway, today I'm going to be sharing with you my monthly favorites for March. And to start out with, I have a drink. Normally I start with makeup or beauty or skincare, but I want to drink this because I'm getting thirsty and I don't want it to get warm. I just took it out of the fridge. It is the Simple Truth Organic Seltzer Water in the pineapple flavor. If you know LaCroix or if you've ever had LaCroix, you know what this is. It's basically the exact same thing, just a different brand and a different flavor. So I think I actually prefer this one because I love the pineapple flavor. It is so delicious. It's so refreshing and car horns as usual. Thank you, Hollywood, for being so noisy. Anyway, I just, I love this. I go through these super quickly. I think you get six in a pack. I could honestly drink these all day long. I just love them so much and they're so tasty. And going into hotter weather, this is gonna be a savior in the warmer months. So let's move on now to my favorite part, makeup and beauty. I guess I'll start with two makeup bags that are my favorites close that one. I have the rest of them in this one. Oh dear. <sighs> Starting out on a high note there, huh? I first saw these uh, around Christmas uh, floating around the YouTube lands. A lot of the British YouTubers were gifted these by Ola Rabonis. I'm totally in love with them. I have two makeup bags. I have one bigger one here. It is a beautiful millennium pink velvet and it has, I don't know if you can see it from far away, nope, there you go. It has a little gold stitching of a face on it and it is super cute. And then I also got the smaller one in navy to keep in my purse as my daily makeup bag. When I first opened the box that they came in, I was like, oh, that's a lot smaller than I thought it would be, but it actually fits all of the makeup that I had in my purse in a bigger bag, so I'm really, really impressed with that. Beautiful colors, you got pink and navy. These are probably two of my favorite colors of all time. And I am really into those little um, faces or little eyes or you know things like that on basically anything. If I see that on a shirt or a makeup bag or a cell phone case or, gosh, I don't know, anything really, I'm most likely gonna want it. Okay, so the rest of my favorites are in here, so let's go ahead and jump on into them. I'm going to start out with makeup and a foundation that I actually purchased earlier this month. The Bobbi Brown Skin Longwear Foundation. It is Bobbi Brown's version of a full coverage long wearing foundation. I think it has a beautiful natural finish and it lasts really well on me all day, which is a nice surprise because like I've said before, I get oily throughout the day with every single foundation. Doesn't matter what base, doesn't matter which foundation, it's just kind of degrees of oiliness. So with this one, at the end of the day, I'd say it's, you know, between minimal and mid-level oiliness. It's not super oily, but it's not like completely matted out. Like I said, can't help it. I'm just always going to get oily regardless. But for me, the big thing with this foundation at the end of the day is that it doesn't look dry or patchy or break up at all around my chin, which happens a lot. I just think that this is going to be a really, really great workhorse foundation for me, and I'm going to reach for it a lot, especially in the summer. Next up, I have a new lipstick in my collection that has been a steady favorite of mine so far this month. It is the Bobbi Brown Art Stick in Electric Pink. Can you tell I'm having a Bobbi Brown moment right now? really think I am. I was first introduced to this by Alana Davison here on YouTube. I saw her put it on in a vlog. She threw this on and holy sophistication Batman. She just looked so beautiful. Obviously she's stunning but she just looked so sophisticated and chic and I knew immediately that I had found my ideal bright pink lip. I just look at this and I see Olivia Palermo. I see Alana Davison. It's a bright pink that is still very sophisticated and chic. And as soon as I bought this and tried it on, I got rid of all the other bright pinks in my collection because nothing stacked up to this. So if like me, you're more of a neutrals girl, you don't venture out of your comfort zone too often and you kind of stick to more neutral and nude lips, definitely run out and give this a try, especially in the spring when you want to be bright and cheery. I just think that this is gonna look so incredibly beautiful on so many different skin tones and 
I cannot wait to wear it for the rest of the spring and the summer. So like I said before, I am very much a neutrals girl when it comes to my makeup. And as much as I'd really like to be adventurous, I just find myself sticking to that color palette. So while I have found myself sticking to my favorite neutral shade range this past month, I have rediscovered an old combo that I kind of forgot about but have started wearing again and really, really loving. We've got All That Glitters and Mulch. It's such a beautiful neutral color combination to wear to like a meeting. I've worn it to a couple of meetings this past month. Got all the glitters on top and mulch on the bottom. I've worn it to a couple of meetings this month and then also just for a really easy neutral eye to throw on during the day and not really have to think too hard about it. This has been a good one. But I have been a little bit more adventurous this month when I picked up the Urban Decay Naked Petite heat palette. I think that this warm eyeshadow trend is here to stay so I have finally jumped on the bandwagon of the warm ready eyeshadow tones and to be honest I've been a little intimidated so I thought that this little palette would be a really great starting point. So many people are talking about it this month and I'm gonna be another one but I haven't seen a lot of people with a uh, super fair skin tone like myself talking about it or people who are more into neutrals talking about it so I definitely think that while this is a much more warm toned color palette, you can make it work and be super neutral. I actually have it on my eyes today with that other combo that I was talking about, Mulch and All the Glitters. I kind of mixed Vibrate and Hot Spell together and threw that in uh, my eye socket as a transition color and then I mixed together Hot Spell and Wild Thing and put that in there in the crease and then also mixed uh, Wild Thing and Hot Spell together and threw that on the lower lash line and then I used Mulch kind of on the outer half of the lid and blended it up into the crease a little bit. Then I threw on all that glitters all over the lid and popped a little bit of the lightest shade inhale on my brow bone and my inner corner highlight and voila you have a really beautiful slightly warm toned but still very neutral eyeshadow look that you could wear to work. I've seen so many beautiful tutorials and looks done with this palette that are very, very smoky and very dramatic, but I wanted to show you that you can keep it pretty simple and you can keep it pretty neutral while still enjoying the trend that so many people are loving right now. And it's also pretty affordable. It's only 29 bucks for six shadows. That's about $5 per eyeshadow. I really don't think you can go wrong with this one. And it's a really great addition to your makeup bag for the summer, especially if you're going on a hot sizzling warm beach vacay. I'm not, but I'll live vicariously through you. So tell me what your summer plans are. That is actually my last makeup favorite. So to kind of segue into the realm of skincare, I'm going to share a new fragrance favorite with y'all. I only have a little sample of this because uh, I'm going to uh, wait and purchase the full size during the Sephora uh, VIB sale coming up in mid-April. I really need another perfume like I need a kick in the head. I have so many. I do rotate them pretty well, but I, st like, I still don't need another perfume. But when I saw this on this new in section of the Sephora website or just like advertised on the front page of the app, the title of it drew me in, looked at the description and went out immediately to try it. I just have a little sample vial of it from Sephora here, but it is the Replica uh, Music Festival. What I really love about the Replica fragrance line from Maison Margiela is that quite a few of them are unisex fragrances, and this one definitely falls under that as well. I really love it because it starts out pretty strong but then settles down into a really nice sweet scent and because I will forget all of the notes and I want to do this fragrance justice I'm going to read from you read for you from a description uh, I think at Fragrantica the website Fragrantica I may be wrong um, all right so the top notes are violet leaf red apple and cannabis but don't get scared by that because it doesn't smell you know, like you're at a concert and the guy next to you lights up a joint. It doesn't smell like that at all. It smells more like a very, the herbal, earthy form of cannabis. So like, not saying you have, but if you have ever smelled the cannabis leaves before they are lit and smoked and inhaled, that's the kind of note that I get out of this. And it doesn't feature prominently on everyone, so don't get scared off by it. Definitely still go and check it out. So then we have the middle notes of patchouli, incense, and tobacco. I always love a tobacco note in my fragrances that's kind of the one that I gravitate towards the most and I really get a very strong hit of patchouli when I first spray this and smell it but that wears away after a while and you just get a very nice sweet 
amber type of scent. And then uh, the base notes are cypress, leather, and cedar. I maybe get a little bit of the cedar, but like I said, on me it dries down to just stay on my skin as a really nice sweet ambery type scent. I really like this because it's a very heady scent, but I've been wearing it during the day and I think that this is going to be a really nice one to have uh, in the summer too. Like it'll be a nice summer fragrance that you can wear during the day and then will also transi transition you well into the nighttime if you're going on a hot day. Anyway, moving on to skincare now. I have had a hell of a time with my skin this month and I would love to say I don't know why it's just going crazy on me but I do know why. I haven't been taking great care of it. I've fallen asleep on my makeup a few too many times. Don't want to admit how many. Uh, I haven't been eating great, been eating a lot of dairy and uh, just in general I haven't really been washing my face at night as much as I should so I'm guessing that's why. Uh, that's usually why. Uh, but I, I have gotten it under control in the past week and a half and I think a big part of that is because of the Mario Badescu drying lotion. This stuff is magic in a bottle. I don't know how it works so well. I think it might be the calamine and the zinc. Oh and salicylic also. But that's what I would guess is so helpful for my skin. I swear I put this on at night after I do my regular skincare routine, I go to bed and when I wake up in the morning, my spots and blemishes, I swear to you, are like 50 to 75% better than they were when I went to bed. It's brilliant. It cuts the healing time pretty much in half or even faster for me and I will now never be able to be without this in my skincare collection. And lastly for skincare, I have a little tiny pharmacy night treatment here. I got as part of a set at Sephora and it is the Pharmacy Sleep Tight Firming Night Balm. It comes in a tiny little, tiny little package like this. Look at how cute. I thought that this was gonna be, you know, a lot of times you'll, skincare items will say, you know, like a night balm, but it's not like a, a lip balm texture. It's more of like a creamy kind of, you know, gel-like thick oily cream texture or whatever. This is li literally a balm. It has a, like, it's like, I don't know if you can see it. It's literally, it's like those, you know, it's like a cleansing balm where you, you know, dig it out of the pot, you rub it together in your hands and then rub it all over your face and it turns into an oil. This is very, very similar. So I picked this up like I said, as part of a set because there were a couple of things that I wanted to try in there. I've actually been pretty lucky that because my skin is oily, I haven't been getting as many fine lines as, and wrinkles like a lot of my friends with drier skin will experience early on. But since I was like 24, 25, I've started incorporating anti-aging treatments and creams and things into my routine because I want to hold that off for as long as you, I can. I know that as much as I want to try at the end of the day it is genetic and what's gonna happen is gonna happen but I want to do the best that I can to prevent it from happening so soon but one of the areas on my face that I really notice a lot of uh, fine lines around my lips and around my mouth and I think that a big part of that is because my lips are very dry but also I drink out of straws I bite my inner lip I bite my cuticle so I'm doing a lot of you know this kind of stuff and I also find that I clench my mouth and my jaw a lot so that doesn't help so I decided to try this overnight just kind of as a localized treatment around my lips. I took a little bit out of the pot, rubbed it in between my pointer and middle fingers on both hands and just kind of dabbed it around the outside of my mouth. And it worked wonders. I went to bed and when I woke up in the morning, I swear I saw a big difference in not only the lines and um, cracks around the outside of my lips but I felt like my lips were just a little bit more plump as well so I'm excited to keep trying this and see if it works long term I had and it also hasn't broken me out yet which is a nice thing too last but certainly not least I have a new shoe favorite and if you are anything like me you've been really into the whole Gucci loafer trend but you can't afford to buy a pair and you're sad about it so you've been looking for a dupe and I have found a fantastic one especially especially for all of my bigfooted ladies out there. Can I get an amen? You're gonna love these if you have been looking for a dupe for a Gucci loafer and you haven't been able to find a good one. I think I've got you covered, friends. I was gonna say ladies, but you might not be a lady. You might be a man or no gender, gender fluid. I don't know. These are the ASOS Wide Fit 
uh, loafers. I think they're called the Movement loafers, and I think they look pretty damn identical to a Gucci loafer. But I would say that the biggest difference is the buckle here. This one is just kind of a straight across bar, whereas the Gucci loafer is more of a true, I'm gonna show my nerdy side here, it's more of a true snaffle bit. That little metal bar on the top part of the Gucci loafer is the same shape as uh, a type of bit that is used on a horse's bridle. Trivia fact for you, if you ever go to a trivia night and they're quizzing you about horse tack, you'll have an answer. Anyway, back to the shoes! These are great, they're they're real leather, um, and I think they were $56 on ASOS. You know, when I opened the box and I looked at these, I was like, oh shit, they look like a grandma shoe. But once you put them on, they're very chic, they're very similar to a Gucci loafer. You only spent like 50 bucks on them instead of what, 650? Is that how much they are? I don't even know anymore. All right, guys, that is it for my March monthly favorites. Thank you so much for stopping by. As always, please do like, comment, and subscribe and introduce yourself because I want to get to know you. And I will see you guys again real soon. Bye.